welcome back to church today. Uh, we're going to sing some more. Uh, Grace greater than our sin. Uh, hopefully you know the words. Sing along with us all four verses. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin. Welcome back. Wednesday evening, time for a good Bible study and message from the book of Proverbs. And uh, we'd like to invite you to join us for a word of prayer. Uh, we've heard some exciting praises from the last couple of days, and I'm excited to share those with you uh, tonight, about 10 minutes after the service. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've been able to catch some of our other content this week, whether it's uh, here on Facebook or, or on our YouTube page. Um, Anything that we, we put out that you enjoy, go ahead and share that. Like it, comment uh, with comment on that, and let's make sure that our reach is being extended. Uh, please keep praying that we'll be able to meet together very soon. Um, that's our expectation. We'll be giving some more plans uh, for that, hopefully very, very soon, but we're excited that you've joined us tonight. Um, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and we'll get to the rest of the service. Dear Holy Father, Lord God, thank you for the opportunity in the middle of the week uh, to open up the Word and to be encouraged, challenged, um, uh, convicted by what you have for us. I pray that you be with Brother Hal as he preaches tonight, and I pray that you continue to use these messages uh, to help us and encourage us during this time. Um, Lord, I pray for our folks 
continue to protect them, whether their physical well-being, their financial uh, well-being. Lord, any way that our folks need help, I pray that you would continue to provide for them. Bless our service and the opportunity that we have to listen to the word. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Hey, don't forget, you can always give online, rhbchurch.com. You can mail in your check uh, if, you're, if you'd like to do that as well. Enjoy the rest of the service. There's a God in heaven who sent his only son to die for the sin of all the world through his death and through his resurrection those who come through the blood would be made whole through the blood through the blood my sin is all gone for I've been when God looks at me now, he does not see my sin, but instead he sees the blood, and he knows I am his through the blood. Through the blood, I know I am saved. My God would hide deserved, no doubt I'd be in hell. Without hope I would perish in my sin. But one day he came to me, and praise God he made me free. For through the blood of his Son he brought me in. Through the blood. I've been through the blood when God looks at me now he does not see my sin but instead he sees the blood and he knows I am his through the blood through the blood I know I am saved through the blood blood when god looks at me now he does not see my sin but instead he sees the blood and he knows i am his through the blood through the blood i know i am saved through the blood i know through the blood, through the blood. Well, good evening, and here we are once again. It's Wednesday night. It's time for church. I hope that uh, you're being faithful. I hope that just because these are posted and you're uh, able to access them at any time, I think it's important that we keep our priorities where church time is church time. Now, I understand if you're not able to, it's a, it's a blessing to have it available. But as we're able, let me encourage you, let's just continue to make this a, a family time where we gather around the Word of God and let the Lord speak to our hearts. We're in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 13. And I want to read one verse. It talks about things that are hard. Things that are hard. You know, it's hard to climb a wall that's leaning at you. It's 
hard to kiss your wife if she's leaning away from you. It's hard to figure out the uh, philosophy of some of the governor's stay-at-home orders. A lot of things are hard, but when God tells us it's hard, then it doesn't mean difficult to figure out. It doesn't mean uh, impossible to take place. It means causing sorrow, causing grief, causing difficulty. Rather than choosing the way of blessing, it's choosing the way of burden. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15 says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. The way of the transgressors is hard. The way is the path, the road, the philosophy, the actions. The way of the transgressor is hard. To transgress means to cross over the line. Think of trespassing. Uh, when a person does goes over the line. God said, don't do this. Don't go any farther than this. And you step over that line. You have trespassed. You have violated God's standard, God's boundary, if you will. You have transgressed. And the Bible says the way, the path, the road of the transgressor is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. Uh, simply put, it's hard not to live for God. It's hard not to do right. Uh, the Bible teaches us some characteristics of transgressors. In Isaiah 40, verse 8, it tells us that the, the transgressor is a deceitful person. The Scripture says, I knew that thou wast deal very treacherously, and was called a transgressor from the womb. Uh, a transgressor isn't always open and blatant and flagrant about his or her sin. Sometimes it's tricky. Sometimes it's sneaky. Sometimes it's deceitful. Transgressors not only are deceitful, but they're defiant. Psalm 119 verse 158 says, I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they kept not thy word. They, a transgressor doesn't care if somebody's aware of his rebellion. A transgressor doesn't care if somebody knows about her sin. They've decided, this is the way that I'm going to go. These are the actions that I'm going to take. And the Bible says, this way, this attitude, this philosophy is hard. The way of the transgressors is hard. In fact, uh, the Bible insinuates the idea here that if you are a transgressor, you're going to struggle. You're going to have difficulties. You're going to have sorrows. You're going to have burdens because the way of the transgressors is hard. Why would it be hard? What makes it so difficult? What makes it, uh, uh, the, the struggles, so great? Well, I think it's a hard way because of the consequences of an action. When a person purposefully sins against God, when a person uh, chooses to disobey, uh, when a person defiantly decides, I'm going to do it my way and not God's way, uh, obviously there are consequences. You, you forfeit the blessings of God. You know, throughout the scripture, we have the promises of God's blessings on the obedient and God's blessings on the faithful and God's blessings on those that do right. For those that do wrong, there's no peace. The scripture tells us in Isaiah, there is no peace, saith my Lord, to the wicked. Uh, when you do wrong, you, you don't have that peacefulness that comes from knowing that God is pleased. You don't have that peace that comes from knowing that you're doing what right, what's right. The scripture says, great peace have they which love thy law. And so when you choose to transgress, you obviously lose the blessing of God, which is that sense of peace. 
You lose satisfaction. The transgressor, the sinner, the rebel is always looking for something to fill that void in their heart, that emptiness in their life. They, they try it by, by trying to accumulate stuff. And they find that all the possessions might bring them a little bit of fun for a while, might bring them a little bit of enjoyment temporarily, but, but it doesn't last. Once the shine is gone, there's no lasting satisfaction. They, they search to fill that void with uh, all kinds of pleasures, whether they be drugs and alcohol. You know, the interesting thing about that is the satisfaction is so temporary that they have to go back to it again and again and again and again. Some have decided that immorality, forsaking God's standard of purity and chastity, is the way to happiness and the way to enjoyment and the way to pleasure. But again, the scars are deep and the sorrow is great. And so the way of the transgressors is hard. There's no stability in the life of a transgressor. You have forfeited the blessings of God. That means there's no protection. There, there's, there's no sense of God watching over and keeping you safe. The Bible is very clear that the Lord is our rock. He's our shelter in the time of storm. But when we get out of the will of God, when we leave his protection, then we find ourselves susceptible to all kinds of sorrows and all kinds of problems, all kinds of troubles. We lose the blessing of his provisions. God takes care of those who love him and serve him, but God oftentimes uses the consequences of our sin to draw us back to him. We, we, we see in the scripture that God has said, whom he loves, he chastens, and he scourges every son that he receives. If I get out of the will of God, I can expect chastening. If I choose the way of the transgressors, the Bible is very clear. Chastening is coming my way. How does God chasten us? Well, he begins with a rebuke. The Holy Spirit working through our conscience says, hey, hey, that's not right. You shouldn't do that. You need to mend your ways. You need to repent. You need to make things right. You need to leave the sin and get back to doing what you know you ought to do. God rebukes us, but if the rebuke doesn't work, sometimes God sends the rod. The rod, the rod of financial difficulties. Now, don't misunderstand. Not every financial problem is uh, uh, an indication of chastening. You know, growing up, there were several times that I got in trouble and several times that I was disciplined by my parents. Several times I got a spanking. In fact, I probably should have gotten more than I did get. But one thing is certain, I never got disciplined without knowing why I was being disciplined. I knew what I had done. What I had done. I knew what the consequences were. I, every time I got a spanking, I knew the transgression that was being punished. Look, if God is chastening you, you know it. You not only know that it's chastening, but you know what the chastening is for. You know what caused the chastening. Sometimes, as I said, it is financial. Amos 4, verse 9, God said to his rebellious people, I have smitten you with blasting and with mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. The palmer worm devoured them. Yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. God used financial hardship on this agrarian culture to bring them back to him. When they had no crops, when they had no money, God used this to cause them to turn to him in their time of want. And sometimes for the transgressor, the rod of correction comes and God uses it 
financially. Sometimes God uses physical problems. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that those who sinned concerning the Lord's table, Paul says, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you. God uses sometimes physical problems. Sometimes God gets our attention through our family. You might remember when David sinned, that great sin with Bathsheba, when he was guilty of committing adultery and murdering her husband to cover his sin, that the child that was conceived in their illicit relationship became sick. And, and David, David begged God to spare the child's life, but God, in his mercy, took that child to heaven. Sometimes our family suffers when we go astray. Sometimes our family bears the consequences of the transgressor. Sometimes there's just the uh, conscience that is never stilled and never quieted until we reach a place of, of emotional despair. Uh, David cried out after his sin in the 51st Psalm. He said, Restore unto me the joy of thou, thy salvation. He was so discouraged and even depressed because of the weight of his sin. Look, you cannot sin and get away with it. I would imagine probably the most miserable people in the world are Christians who are not right with God. The unsaved don't know any better. They don't understand what they're missing. Those living for God enjoy the blessings, enjoy the benefits. But the Christian who knows better and chooses to do wrong forfeits all of the blessings of God. And so there are consequences to sin. There's also, for the transgressor, collateral damage. Not just afflicting and affecting the transgressor, but it also affects those who love the transgressor. You watch the children in a family where husband and wife are in conflict. You see the effect of, a, of an unhappy marriage on the children, and you'll notice that the way of the transgressors is hard, not just for the one doing wrong, but also for the children. Sometimes uh, transgression causes sorrow. How many parents have I counseled who have children who were raised knowing what was right, but chose to do wrong, and now they're away from God and out of the Lord's will. And although it may not trouble them on the surface, on the surface, their parents are troubled, their loved ones are concerned, uh, their, their tears uh, flow often, and their burden is heavy because the way of the transgressors is hard, not just to the sinner, but to those that love the sinner. Uh, it, it causes a, an amount of, of self-indictment. The parent says, what could I have done differently? Is it my fault she's re in rebellion? Is it my fault he's chosen to go away from God? Is it my fault when the whole responsibility is with the transgressor who has chosen a hard way, and the consequences affect many. They affect those who are led by us. Parents, you have a responsibility to be right with God. You have a, a duty to set a good example. If you choose to be a mediocre Christian, if your life is lukewarm in the sight of God, you are affecting your children. And although you may not see it now, let me remind you, the way of the transgressors is hard. They're watching you. They're looking at you. They're learning from you. What a sad indictment that many of our young people, when they grow up and choose a life's mate and get married, they don't really have the tools to have a happy home because they never saw a happy home growing up. They don't have the tools to have a godly home because they didn't have godly leadership in their home. The Lord needs to impress upon each of us who have the privilege to raise children that we have a wonderful privilege, but it's a heavy responsibility. They learn from us and then they live with the consequences of our rebellion. Oh, there's 
the way of the transgressors is hard because it's a downhill slope. The heart becomes hardened. When that person first got away from God, first chose to sin, first began doing wrong, the conscience was afflicted, the Holy Spirit was convicting over and over and over. But as we close our ears, as we determine to ignore the conviction of the Holy Spirit, it's almost like a, a, a callous forms on our heart until the things that used to bother you don't bother you as much anymore. Our sins become more heinous. We begin with a little sin and it grows and grows and grows and left unchecked. It becomes great sin. God, help us. You say, oh, that, that wouldn't necessarily happen to me. Look at David. His sin began with lust. He saw Bathsheba and lusted after her. And that grew into immorality and that grew into murder as he covered his sin. I'm telling you, the way of the transgressors is hard because downhill goes that slope that leads to destruction. Our influence becomes more and more harmful. And tragically, repentance becomes more and more unlikely. A person who has spent several years doing wrong, who knows he or she should have done right, it's difficult, it's hard for them to come back to God. You say, well, I don't want that in my life. I don't want that in my home. I don't want to be a transgressor. I want to be close to God. I want to be right with God. Well, let me ask you, where are you tonight? Where are you right now? Are you where you need to be spiritually? Let's do some evaluation. Are you completely and thoroughly right with God? If not, you need to get right with God because every step away from God, every reason that keeps you from saying, yes, I am right with God, is a reason uh, that we are moving farther and farther away. Are you consciously hanging on to something that you know is wrong? Well, you know, I, I, I do right most of the time, but I have this one problem. Well, I need to get victory in this one area. If you know there's something wrong and you're not willing to make it right, let me remind you, the way of the transgressors is hard. Are you one who consistently justifies your actions? When you're convicted or confronted, you say things like, well, I know a lot of Christians who do this. A lot of folks don't have a problem with this. You know, the interesting thing is the Holy Spirit lives in our hearts individually. And as God convicts me, Maybe it might be all right for somebody else, but if I'm convicted, I need to take care of it now. And so a, a, a danger sign of heading down this road that is the hard way is if I'm not completely right with God. If I'm not, if I am consciously hanging on to something I know is wrong, if I'm consistently justifying my actions, let me ask you this question. Do you do contrary than your counsel? When you ask for advice and ask for counsel and it's been given, or maybe you've heard from the pulpit what the Bible says and the counsel of your pastor, the counsel of somebody that's been placed in spiritual authority over you. Do you live contrary to the counsel? The way of transgressors is hard. Are you comfortable with things that used to bother you? Have you, have you noticed your convictions changing and changing and changing and changing? Are they different? The way of the transgressors is hard. Honestly and sincerely examine your life, not based on what others do, 
Not based on what others say, but based on what does God say? What does God expect? What is the best course, the best path for my life? You know, I'm so tired of Christians wondering how much they can get away with. How close to sin can I come? How about if we get far away from ungodliness and far away from wickedness and far away from carnality and far away from the world? How about if we just jump in with both feet and say, God, I want to be a holy, godly, separated Christian. How wonderful that would be. So what do we do? If we find these characteristics of the transgressor, if we find these, uh, the, these traits that, that demonstrate that we're in danger of heading down that hard way, what do I do? Well, the first thing, you just realize your condition. Take an honest inventory of yourself. Where are you spiritually? Some of you may be in the midst of that hard way. You might have rebelled against God and you've gone away. And maybe tonight God has woken you up. Maybe tonight the Holy Spirit has poked at your heart one more time. And honestly, you say, I am not right with God. I'm away from the Lord. Maybe you're not in the midst of the hard way, but maybe you're gradually just moving away from the Lord. You know, things like you don't read your Bible every day anymore. You don't pray anymore. You don't spend as much time thinking about the things of God anymore. The, the, the things that used to bother you, now you wonder about them. I wonder if uh, it would be okay. I wonder if I should. I wonder what the effect would be. Just... Maybe you're just a little bit, I don't know what the uh, appropriate word would be, but uh, wondering about sin. Wonder what it would be like if I didn't have these rules, if I didn't have these restrictions, if I didn't have these requirements. Can I remind you that what we call rules and restrictions and requirements God has placed in our lives to protect us and to help us and to build us. So number one, realize your condition. Number two, repent of your sin. Repent of your sin. Request forgiveness. We said it so often as cliche. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess your sins. Ask God to take away your desire to do wrong. Ask God to help you to resist the temptation. Ask God to give you a deepening love for him that keeps you to do right, keeps you doing right. Request reconciliation. Lord, I want that closeness with you again. Request restoration. God, I want you to use me again. And then resolve to stay right with God. Make it a daily prayer. Lord, help me to do what you want me to do. Help me to live how you want me to live. Help me to be what you want me to be. Submit to God's authority. You're not in control. He's in control. Surrender to his will. Serve faithfully and then search your heart every day. Lord, am I doing what I need to do? Are there sins I need to confess? Are there habits that I need to get victory over? God, I don't want the hard path. I want the way of blessing. I want the way of bounty. You know, we all face a choice. Am I going to live for God completely and wholly? Am I going to surrender and submit and be the Christian that God wants me to be? Or am I going to go down the hard path? The way of the transgressors is hard. Heavenly Father, bless the message. I pray you'd speak and challenge every single heart. Lord, may we determine on purpose to get right and stay right and be right. God, I pray for those who are away from you that you'd convict their hearts and bring them back. Lord, I pray for those that have loved ones, children, parents who aren't doing right. God, keep us faithful. Keep them faithful in their prayers. And then, Lord, answer those prayers we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.